Hi, my name's Jackson Kirkman Brown. Thank you to all the people who watched the Facebook Live uh, about our research here at the University of Birmingham last time. And today I'm going to try and go through a few answers to some of your questions. So somebody asked about whether you can make sperm throughout your life or whether your fertility changes with age. As a man, the number of sperm that you make a day or a week is pretty much set down in utero, so when you're a baby inside your mother. From when you reach puberty, you'll start making sperm and you'll make them at that rate, usually throughout the rest of your life. However, as a man gets slightly older, into his late 40s, the quality of those sperm does drop off. Hopefully from that you've understood that your sperm count could be very low when you're young and it will usually, apart from in certain cases, be maintained at that low level throughout your life. It is known that men with very low sperm counts are slightly more prone to other diseases throughout their lifetime, although it's not yet understood how this relates to a sperm count. The next question was about how you have uh, an improvement in your sperm quality or what you can do to have the very best sperm that you can have as an individual. That's quite interesting because it's not all about sperm count. You have the potential through healthy diet and other things to improve the quality of the sperm that you've got. A number of things you can do are reduce your drinking. In terms of diet, a Mediterranean diet has been found to be quite favourable and there is some evidence that eating things like Brazil nuts and walnuts may help, although that's of a low level quality. Heat is known to affect male fertility, so the reason that a man's testicles hang away from the body is so that they can operate at a temperature slightly lower than the 37 that our body is. Therefore, keeping your testicles warmer for a long period of time may change that. So very long hot baths, having your laptop on your knee for prolonged periods of time, or possibly wearing very tight underwear that doesn't allow your testicles to hang away from the body may all have some effect on sperm. They're not going to work as a contraceptive, but if you have a low sperm count, doing something about that situation may help improve the quality. Finally, it's really important to understand that saving sperm up isn't a good idea. So regular ejaculation keeps a fresh set of sperm there. Having an abstinence of more than two days does not help you get better sperm. It may increase the count, but actually many of the sperm there are older, poorer quality sperm. Then somebody asked, is it too late to change my lifestyle now? Or Maybe, do I not have to change my lifestyle now? Can I change it later? So we'd always say that in terms of fertility health, it's best to change your lifestyle as soon as you can, but never lose hope. Changing your lifestyle at any stage is never too late. Better earlier, better a healthy diet earlier, but if you're just trying to conceive now and have a problem, then certainly go ahead, change your lifestyle to as healthy as possible, and you should benefit from that. Our next set of questions related more to miscarriage and understanding some things about our miscarriage research. So one of the comments said, why were you only hearing about this research now? And the lady thought that from her perspective, everything related to miscarriage was female. Certainly, our research is very new on the scene. That's partly why we're doing these Facebook Lives to explain things. But we do really believe that miscarriage is more than just about any kind of female factor on its own. And our evidence is supporting this. I think you're only starting to hear that because it's a very new uh, field of research and all of the data in the past has reflected finding out things about the female and trying to chase up female factors. We're trying to change it and we hope to have better diagnoses and better things available for you in the near future so that every couple who are experiencing miscarriage can actually know whether there's a male factor there. Many more couples having an explanation. Um, somebody asked about the tests that are available related to male factors. So at the moment, all the work around 
sperm DNA based causes of miscarriage is still pretty much research. There are a few tests, we're using all of them in the Tommy's National Centre for Miscarriage Research, but we're still finding out what exact thresholds are. And none of these tests say that was a definite cause. What these tests say is actually in this scenario it's more likely that the sperm of the man was the cause because damage is at a certain level in his cells. So it's early days, but if you want to know more, please go through to our website at the Tommy's National Centre and we will have some links below so that you can click through to this and find out and get in touch with us. Uh, finally, a number of you have asked for details about the trial that I mentioned of a dietary supplement to improve sperm DNA. Again, if you click through the links, you can get through to our trial center. Um, really, we're only recruiting from patients at our center in Birmingham, but the team will be happy to talk through with you what's available and whether you can be in touch with us. The next set of questions I've grouped to roughly consider conception and chance of conception. So many people said, actually, we're wanting to try for a child. How do we best do that? What's the best way of trying? And there are a few key things there to know. Every lady who is trying to get pregnant or not avoiding getting pregnant should be taking folic acid. So you need to go out there and buy from a pharmacy a reasonable grade preconceptual folic acid supplement and every lady should do that. It helps the baby avoid any problems that can be associated in, with development of the nervous system. After you've done that, both of you should be having a healthy diet, reducing the amount of alcohol and certainly not smoking. And that's dad not smoking, very importantly, as well as mum. Beyond that, when you're trying naturally for a child, you should try every other day. So don't aim to try and have intercourse at the time that you think you're ovulating, but be having intercourse at least every other day. That maximizes the chance of conception. And in terms of that intercourse, we do know that a number of couples when they're trying somewhat lack the spontaneity because they're trying for a child and then resort to different intimate lubricants. Things like KY jelly, although they are not a spermicide, are actually very bad for sperm and sperm motility, and they're gonna reduce the chance of you conceiving naturally. So ideally, you would be avoiding lubricants altogether when trying for a child. Thank you for listening to these answers, and please feel free to follow the links through to other sites and further information if you wish.